What is the up, ABO losers? My name is Negative Blue, call me Negative, and this is a reminder that digital footprints do indeed exist, and we choose to live in spite of them every single day. And you want to know what has my FBI agent in particular wrinkling their nose up in disgust as they log my weekly browser history? The freaking Omegaverse. I'm sure my other concerning AO3 visits also made the cut, but never mind that. Specifically my version of the Omegaverse. It's tender, it's brutal, it's everything that leaves me shaking in agony at night because this IRL AU we're stuck in SUCKS! But before we get to all of that, let's take a moment to see what's being arted on screen for us today. If you haven't pieced it together yet, this is little fan art of Catwoman and Batman that I started in 2022 when the movie dropped and I'm only now finishing near the end of 2023. I'm sure any changes in my skill or style are pretty subtle, but feel free to let me know if it's actually noticeable. And right quick for the girls that would normally get it but are a bit confused at the moment, rightfully so. Um, do not be alarmed by this hetero presenting couple on my screen right now. I promise it will not be happening often. And besides, we all know the bat and the cat are bisexual icons anyway. Matter of fact, for funsies, what do y'all think the alignment would be on these two in the Omegaverse anyway? Oh, and uh, real, real quick. You know who this motherfucker look like, Loki? Look! I don't got nothing to promote since it's only the second vid and everything, but my scripts say to mention something, so shout out, Krita. I'm not sponsored or anything. I'm just broke, so that's why I like them so much. Anyways, let's get back to my off-brand OV. Now, remember. These are just my personal headcanons. I'm not saying this is law or that I made the Omega first. Matter of fact, I don't think anyone specifically did, but if you find that mofo, tell him I got a heartfelt thank you note, scheduled therapy appointments, and a restraining order ready in a care package form. All right? Okay. All right, I hate to do it to y'all in this one, but it's gotta be done. Honestly, it's kind of what I do. This is going to be a lore heavy one in regard to the terminology and definitions and stuff I created for this AU. Um, there is a lot more, there will be sequels, just had to warn you. Let's get with it. First off, what even is the Omegaverse, right? Because truth be told, I just know it as... But the premise is too golden to just leave it there for me. The most concise description I can find is a subgenre of speculative erotic fiction and originally a subgenre of erotic slash fanfiction in which its premise is that a dominance hierarchy exists in humans or humanoid creatures which are divided into dominant alphas, neutral betas, and submissive omegas. I see already thinking. Oh my goodness. And of course, as we know, this ain't even the tip of the iceberg. But before we completely sink into these cursed waters, my idea of headcanoning is that it is a way to fill in gaps and or expand on ideas, characters, and lore that is given little to no direct confirmation or condemnation by the IP holder. A head fanon would be if you fleshed out the aforementioned details despite knowing the creators meant otherwise. It's world building and character development for the fans. So, I've come up with five distinct types of mates. These are basically gauges of attraction and how meant to be or compatible you are with any given person you encounter. They are pretty self-explanatory, but you really gonna tell an extra nigga like me not to do what I do best? <laughs> okay then. True mates. The cream of the crop, top tier, literally the best you'll ever have. A true mate is synonymous with, say, a soulmate, except it's actually a faded connection, as are all connections in this OV. This the strongest, most unbreakable relationship type you could ever be lucky to foster, but it's extremely rare for most to find theirs easily. Perfect Mates The runner-up to true mate, finding a perfect mate is a fantastic win all its own. If you're not the type to either rent a permanent seat on a plane for how often you'll be traveling, 
or exceptionally lucky in meeting your true mate with little to no effort, then you'll be ecstatic to find your perfect mate. Imagine your ideal type of person in any category of relationship, except they go off script of what you'd like sometimes, still perfect, but still a person. Ordinary mate. Everything is exactly what it seems, or is it? Your ordinary mate would be someone who you are generally neutral to. In consideration to the complexity of people, I've actually broken this one down into subtypes. Let me explain. Extraordinary. This is the thanks made my day of relationships. The kind of person that you wouldn't particularly claim closeness to, but y'all absolutely are fond of one another. Think that one coworker that you'd be conjoined at the hip with at work, but wouldn't even look in each other's direction once you clock out. Ordinary. Super neutral, super general. Your ordinary mates don't feel anything implicitly bad or good towards you. They are the casual NPCs of life, forever unable to tip the scale of perception. Infraordinary. These the low-key haters in the world, I'm not gonna lie. The type of nigga you can see step out a hot shower and you still can't help the stank face from activating? Like, it's not even no beef. You truly just can't vibe with them. Witness the epitome of you can't please everybody. Heading back to the main roster of five with imperfect mates. Nope, nah, nope. You hate this relationship with a scorching passion. This is the crux of everything you can't stand in a person minus a few redeeming traits that you choose to remain neutral to out of spite. It's the when your op make a good joke to the group and you know it was good but you ain't gonna laugh because they're an op if it was an overall connection. False mates. Ring the freaking alarms. You hate this type of person with extra hot breath on the H. There's for sure beef, chicken, pork, and all the ingredients in an every meat burrito with the way y'all be trying to wrap each other's lives up for good. The intensity works the same as with a true mate, just opposite. You'd either flight, fright, or fight this person on sight or on sense, now that I think about it. To clarify and make it spicy for you, you can't know the type of mate that you are dealing with by scent alone. You could be able to tell if you like them or not, if that's their natural scent, but not exactly how much. There could be a stronger scent out there. Similarly, there are five categories that any given relationship you have surely falls into. If I miss something, no I didn't, and you're splitting hairs. These are wigs, honey. Familiar mate, your relatives, like your blood family members. Though adoptive, step, and found family members are absolutely valid in social dynamics, the OV is operating off lineage here. Think of it as just a matter of business, like medical stuff, that has no real say in who or what is family to you. Platonic mates, you already know what I mean. My personal favorite type of relationship to have, your homies, your team for real. The OV makes the experience of having friends more unique in that you can literally smell if the relationship is supposed to be anything else. A lot less cases of men faking friendship with the hopeful end goal of breaching some woman's romantic slash sexual heart. Unfortunately, there is a near undetectable way for that to happen still, but I'll get back to it later. Romantic mates. These are your lovey-dovey connections. Here's to your hand-holding, your spit-swapping, your ignoring of death glares as your level of PDA reaches the broke baby daddy hugging an amusement park line stage. You're in love! The OV has grouped this intimate category as separate from sexuality, but of course a person could have positive sense for both at the same time. As a side note, if you've never heard of something like this or are unsure how it makes sense, please research romantic orientation versus sexual orientation and terms in communities like this. Sexual mates. Sexual and romantic connections give off different scent patterns, so having strictly sexual, no strings attached, the strings being romance, relationships are totally casual. These partnerships can be holistic, with great emotional depth, not exclusive to hookups, one night stands, or sneaky links. However, people are inclined to group this category with the romantic variant out of convenience and or societal norms of putting two and two together in an effort for perceived propriety. Common mates. 
Yes, you even have a designated scent pattern for everyday people whom you hold nothing against or for. A common relationship in your life would be found in that of casual strangers, work professionals, and people of that degree. Remember, you can have any type of mate within any category, so yeah, you could hypothetically have a true mate in your dentist, but it'd be nothing but you really loving to be around your dentist casually. Last note of clarity before we move on. You are absolutely able to differentiate between what category of mate a person falls in. The scent receptors in your body slash biology will reserve certain odorous patterns for different categories. For example, your biological makeup may give you muted and savory smells, can be good, bad, or neither, for family, but strong and tangy smells for lovers. You won't mistake your cousin for being a potential lover. Well, hopefully. Alright, alright, showtime is what you clicked on for my OV's ABL situation. By this point, if you're not of age, go lurk elsewhere. I fight kids for real. Like, for real, for real. Like, I will actually fight your freaking kid. My interpretations here are nothing too out of the ordinary, honestly. Based stuff like any ABO first sex is not limited to any female intersex male second sex. For the most part, you can be born any combination of anything and it makes life so much more interesting. Alpha. Ah yes, the dominant forces of society that lead us through every aspect of life whether it was asked for or not. Alphas, regardless of second sex, have the knocking up power. They have their periods of for sure fertility found in ruts. These ruts can come naturally ever so often or be stirred up by the alluring sense of others, typically if those others are in heat or rut themselves. Alpha's time of the month, I'm gonna call it, doesn't have any organ shifting, anatomy altering, bodily functions outside of me horny, so their experience is really one to one with most cis males in our universe. Beta. I'm gonna be honest, y'all don't give a damn about betas. I don't think I've ever read or watched anything with ABO trope that didn't either completely ignore the existence of betas or just make them these unfleshed out, non-playable, secondary character types. And I feel this characterization stems from alphas being commonly linked to men and omegas being linked to women, leaving something of a, what now, gap in identity when talking of betas. If we're being earnest, it's obvious that betas are seen as the intersex or non-binary people of society and fandom. This is further corroborated by the androgynous, neutral, sexless, somewhere in the middle of the two extremes characterization often afforded to the sex. And as an MB myself, I'm gonna take this characterization and run with it. So in my interpretation, betas are these rare, low-key goaded, beings that naturally have either a mixture of alphas and omegas traits or none at all but they can opt in lean towards and derive from whichever sex they choose it's like having adaptation on 100 but processes can be sped along through medical means too omega on to our favorite specimens in the verse the resident bitch boys that fandom just can't get enough of tormenting with sex specific violence and intimidation <laughs> I wish I was lying. Omegas are the OV equivalent of cis females, and this is a direct translation from the BFFR Bible. I still kept the sentiment of omegas and betas if they opt for it, being the ones with the wombs and ovulation style heats, and of course, the lung strangling, lingering scent that everyone breaks their necks for. Also, side note. We agree that with the OV being the wolf sex dynamic trope that the Omega heat scent thing is basically the IRL phenomenon where dogs stay sniffing all up in the coochie when someone period be on. Like, have y'all noticed that? Right? Am I the only one to make that compare? Any who's in. The main distinction to be made about Omegas in my OV is that they aren't just helpless territory to be claimed by alphas. Of course, conservative-minded people feel like they are, and there's backwards regions in the world where that is the case. They have their own Omega liberation movements, and they fight for further equality in daily socio-political life. It's legitimately just a rip-off the real world and women, y'all. Even in all these headcanons and daydreams we love, stay woke. 
so I do things a bit differently on this side. I know all this Alpha Omega Psi stuff is based off the Greek alphabet, yeah? I had canon with a mix of creative accuracy to canon material and BS inspirational takes that just feel right. These next terms are based on vibes and common slang. Sigma. It's supposed to be like this manosphere do broish word for a lone wolf man, but ah, yeah, no. It's a colloquial term used to suggest that someone is playing their part diligently within their OV role. Like if someone were to say you were a Sigma Omega, they mean that you are a very traditional or classic Omega based off of what the societal expectations and stereotypes are for Omegas. Kappa. Now this one, this one right here, it's great stupidity. Bruh. Okay, hear me out though, hear me out though. Now, what if Kappa was the colloquial term for the exact opposite of Sigma? You, still being an Omega in this example, decide you're not gonna be this little submissive nigga no more and here come the claims that you're a Kappa Omega or even, oh, so you Kappa now, as to imply that you're going against your nature. SIG would also be a popular slang abbreviation. All right, that's all I'll be disclosing about my OV for now. Partly because I'm sure the length on this is already gonna be wicked, but mainly because we're gonna be revisiting my extensive world building nonsense when part two drops in the near future. You can view this finished piece on my IG, Tumblr, and probably other platforms if I can format them right. I personally think they're both betas. But let me know how y'all interpret it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this and want that part two with expedited shipping, okay? Okay. <laughs> and until the next time, that's Deuces from Blue. Bye-bye.